Hello, welcome to English 111. This is their lecture on narration. Narration. Our first paper is a narrative, and that means basically a narration deals with telling a single story or several related stories. So basically, a narrative is a story that you're going to create about yourself. Yes, and we talked about that in the other time as far as what specifically you're going to be doing for this assignment. But this is a lecture that kind of just talks about narration in general. So the main goal of the narrative essay is to feel like the student, or whoever's reading it rather, was there. I was there. You want to convey the essence of the experience and invoke its meaning. So basically you want to, if someone's reading what you wrote, they want to, you want them to feel like they're there and experiencing what you're experiencing. But not only that, you want to invoke its meaning. What does that even mean? Um, give me an example. Sometimes you may have a friend or a family member who comes up and starts telling you a story, and you're thinking, why are you telling me this story? And Because you have no idea. Um, because you have no idea what they're trying to say or why they're telling the story. They're, they haven't invoked its meaning. There's no point to what they're trying to say. Yeah. Anyway, so speaking of invoking the meaning, a thesis is the meaning or the reason for writing something. Therefore, even narratives need a thesis. You don't want to tell a story just for the sake of telling a story. Why are you telling the story? You know, why is the story important? Why should I care about the story? So, yeah, that's important. So, what is at the heart of every single story? I had a teacher in college who used the word trouble, but the, basically the, the, the gist of it is conflict. Now conflict doesn't always mean fighting, like people getting into an argument, but conflict is usually someone's trying to do something and something is stopping them or preventing them from doing it. Something's getting in the way. It can be any kind of anything. And so stories are kind of about conflict and how the person overcomes the conflict. Um, that's really the heart of every single story. It could be, uh, you know, you're trying to get to school and you miss the bus. Okay, then how did you get this? You know, the conflict is you have to get to school, but you can't normally get there the way you normally do, so you have to figure out a way to do it. That would be a story. Uh, let's say you're trying to get your significant other to go see a movie you want to see, and they don't want to go see that movie, so you try to convince them. You know, so the conflict would be how do you get them to do that? Or maybe the conflict could be even um, you had an assignment to do for English class, write a paper, but you didn't want to do it. You'd rather just uh, kind of play video games. Okay, the conflict is you need to get the assignment done. Well, how'd you do it? So, basically, there you go, conflict. So, for example, let's kind of create a story here. So, imagine where we set a, uh, have a setting here. Okay, so let's say we got a person that's sitting on this side of the this ocean or whatever this is, and their goal is to get to that lighthouse. Okay, so let's say the person over here is a female, she's 21, she goes to Shaw University, um, and she's just a normal person, doesn't have any special powers or anything like that. So how could she possibly get to the lighthouse? Well, we could make stuff up. So let's see, I don't know, we, she could look, she, could she swim? Well, she jumps into the water, and then the water's too cold, and she realizes that she's not going to be able to make it, so then she has to climb back here. So, so there's conflict. Something's preventing her from getting in the way. Okay, so the first conflict is there's water between her. Then we try something. It's like, ah, oh, she can't do that. She can't swim. She's not going to work. So then what, how are we going to resolve that? Well, she looks over here. She finds a boat. Let's say she climbs into the boat, starts to row to the other side. Halfway through, she gets attacked by a shark. And a shark starts to eat the boat. Okay. Uh, oh, my gosh. What is she going to do now? She's in the middle here. She's be, going to be eating my shark. How does she, what does she do? Well, she takes one of the paddles and hits the shark over the head. Okay, but now she's sinking. So she takes the life preserver and she starts to swim and she realizes she's not going to have more energy, enough energy to get to the other side. And just then a helicopter comes by and picks her up, swoops her over, and takes her to the lighthouse. Okay. So you see how there's conflict in there? Is that a lot more interesting than she just swam to the other side? Yeah, there is. Okay. So, in narration, you must do the following. Get to the point, okay? Why are you telling this story? You know, right off the beginning, don't say, I'm telling you this story because this was whatever. But it needs to be fairly clear up front what the story is about um, and why you're, sh why you're sharing it. This is the most, you know, the scariest time I've ever had in my life. This is the time I was the most proud or this is a big, 
you know, moment in my life where I decided what I wanted to be or, you know, when I got in, you know, enrolled into Shaw and my first day of college, that was a big deal. You know, get to the point of why you're sharing that particular story. In addition, make sure it's organized. Again, you may have those friends or family members or someone telling you a story and they're all over the map and they're telling you stuff and you're like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on? And they're not kind of telling the story in a logical way that makes sense to you. Yeah, that's not good. So make sure you're organized. In addition, whoa there, whoa, whoa, whoa. Only develop the details that advance the narrative point. Meaning that yes, and we'll do a video on description in here in just a few minutes. Uh, anyway, um, but you do want to include details. That helps people feel like they're there. But you don't need to spend half your paper talking about what the sunset looked like. Okay, unless the unless the story is about the sunset. But if let's say you're trying to get to school in the morning, you don't want to spend a whole you know half a paper describing what the weather's like. That doesn't really have anything to do with the story per se. So only develop the details that advance the narrative point. Speaking of details. Use vivid sensory descriptions, and again, there will be another lecture on that. So make sure that you use vivid sensory descriptions um, that help invoke the feeling of the person being there. Yeah, that's important. When you're writing this paper, you're going to be using verb tenses. Verb tense, um, as a reminder, you should learn this in English 110 or, other, or before, is basically there's two kinds that we're going to be dealing with. You have, it's about time, it's dealing about time. Okay, meaning that there's past tense and there's present tense. So past tense um, deals with stuff. I walked down the street. Okay, I see walked. That happened in the past. Billy loved to play with Legos. See, that happened in the past. Okay, but he doesn't anymore, apparently. Uh, Joe's mama ate a pickle. She's not eating a pickle. She ate a pickle. Past tense. Okay. I punched him in the face. That happened in the past. So these are past tense. The verb is all in past tense. Okay, so that's stuff that's happened in past tense. Examples of present tense. I love my wife. Okay, not I loved, past tense. I love my wife. I still currently love her. That's present tense. Jane likes to play with dolls. Not liked, likes. So that's still going on. It's present tense. Tommy's dad is eating a taco. Eating is present tense. Okay, yay, present tense. Eating. Okay, I am punching him in the gut. Okay, not that I punched, I am currently punching him. I am punching him in the gut. Because of narratives or our story, and you're going to write a story about what happened to you, you want to use past tense because it happened in the past. So for this paper, write it past tense. Yes. Okay, your turn. So figure this out. Are these past or present tense? Looking in the mirror, I see I have green eyes. So quiz yourself. You think that's present tense or past tense? car engine starts with a roar. Is that present tense or is that past tense? Okay, what do you think? I shoved the food in my mouth. Is that past tense or present tense? Kenny lifted up the rock and then threw it. Is that past tense or is that present tense? Did that happen in the past or is it happening now? Okay, how did you do? I don't know, I don't know. Okay, let's see how you did. Looking in the mirror, I see I have green eyes. This would be present tense. Looking, not looked. Okay, I see, not I saw. So this would be present tense. That is present tense. That is not something you would write in a narrative generally because you are writing about a story that happened in the past, at least for this uh, assignment. The car engine starts with a roar. Okay, again, look for the verb starts. Starts, not started. So starts with a roar, that is present tense again. The car engine starts with a roar, present tense. I shoved the food in my mouth. Shoved, that is past tense, that's the verb, there's the action. Shoved, past tense, happened in the past. And Kenny lifted up the rock and then threw it. Okay, lifted, threw, these are both past tense, okay. One thing you want to make sure is you are consistent. If you're going to use past tense, use past tense all the way through it. Or you're really going to mess up your uh, reader, and we don't want that. So there is the election on narration. The election? How about the lecture on narration? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there will be another lecture on description, so make sure you watch that as well.